What camera should you buy for photography if you're a beginner? That's what we're gonna talk about today. And I'll give you some tips, some information, some advice so that hopefully by the end of the video, it'll be easier for you to make a decision. And let's start with camera brands. You know, a few days ago, someone asked me what I think about Nikon and I was like, what the hell's a Nikon? And apparently it's a camera brand. Now, at first I thought maybe Nike started making cameras now. Nike, Nikon, I don't know, like sports cameras. Just do it! But no, so listen, legend has it that a long, long time ago, you know, back when people weren't offended by everything, well, back then, a lot of photographers were actually shooting on cameras made by this elusive brand called Nikon. I know, it sounds crazy, I've never heard of it. I'm joking, of course, Nikon's great. Their marketing, not so much. And we should go easy on Nikon shooters because, I mean, we shouldn't be making fun of elderly people, right? So yeah, enough with the Nikon bashing for now. Um, cameras. Look, I've been doing this for more than 15 years now and I've shot on Canon cameras, Pentax, Sony, Polaroid. And the reality is that all the well-known brands these days make excellent cameras, even Nikon. So there is no best brand. And so if you're a beginner, you shouldn't worry too much about brands or what brand you should buy. What you should be doing is trying to figure out what you need in a camera, the specifications and the features. What are you planning to do with the camera and the images? Is it just for friends and family, social media, or are you planning to make prints? And if you buy the right camera for your needs, then it doesn't matter what brand you end up buying because it will be a great camera no matter what. When it comes to the budget, the first thing you should know or realize is that buying an expensive camera won't make you a better photographer. So if you're a beginner, just go for a budget option. Because I've seen it so many times before, people who buy a super expensive camera because they're getting into photography and they think that they're the next big travel influencer, but then three weeks later, because they haven't reached a million followers yet and everything takes so long and it's so difficult, they give up and then the camera is just sitting there gathering dust. $5,000 down the drain. Wow, rent initiated. Uh, but you know what I mean, right? It's a waste of money. And the thing is, you can learn all the important things on a budget camera. Exposure, lighting, composition, focal lengths. And then once you've mastered all that, well, then it's okay to start looking at more expensive cameras. If you're still shooting every day after one or two years of learning everything, you know, then it's okay to start looking at more expensive cameras. But as a beginner, don't spend more than a thousand dollars. That's what I would recommend. You can, of course, it's your money, but in my opinion, it's a waste of money. Because, you know, when I started studying at photography college, I did my first two years with a $750 setup. It was an APS-C camera with a kit lens. And if it's good enough for photography college, well, it's surely good enough for a beginner, right? And these days you can get a decent camera even cheaper than that. Point and shoot, bridge camera, film camera, DSLR, mirrorless camera. So many options, but in my opinion, it's a no-brainer. Just go for a mirrorless camera with interchangeable lenses. That's it. That's what all the brands are investing their resources in. So why go for anything else? Now, you might be asking yourself, what's the deal with that mirror? A mirror inside a camera. Why? What is that? Wow, mirror. Mirror is a very difficult word for me to pronounce. Mirror and I'm gonna have to say it a lot in the next 30 seconds. So brace yourselves. Mirror. Um, look, before the mirrorless cameras, DSLRs had a mirror inside the body. And so the light goes through the lens onto that mirror, then it goes up, there's another mirror there, and then the light hits your eye through the viewfinder and you can see the image, a real life image. It's like a periscope. And the sensor is hidden behind that mirror. So whenever you take a photo for a split second, the mirror goes up and it takes the photo and the mirror goes back down. And it's all mechanical. And mirrorless cameras now don't have that mirror, duh. Um, and so the light goes straight onto the sensor. And what you see through the viewfinder is not a real life image, it's a digital image. It's like looking at a small TV screen. But it's not only that, you know, 
What you basically get now is just a more modern version of the DSLR. It's like the evolution, the, the natural evolution of cameras. Film cameras, DSLRs, mirrorless cameras. That's it. So for beginners, I always recommend just go for a mirrorless camera with interchangeable lenses that can go on fully manual mode. That's what you need and you're good to go. Now, some of you are using a smartphone for photography and also videography, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, nothing. You can even learn all the basics on a smartphone, exposure, lighting, composition, focal lengths, because these days you can even put different lenses on your smartphone. But the thing is, you know, if you take your photography more seriously, at some point you're gonna have to go for a real camera because no matter what anyone says, Apple fanboys, Samsung fanboys, smartphones are not on the same level as a real camera. Not at all, it's, it's like physically impossible. But again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using a smartphone. If you're okay with the limitations that a smartphone has, or if you didn't even realize that there are limitations, then use your smartphone, by all means, of course. Because a good photographer with a smartphone will make much better photos than 95% of the people with a $5,000 camera. 100% reality, trust me. The sensor is the heart of your camera. So the light hits the sensor and then the sensor basically turns that light into pixels and an image. And there are different sensor sizes. Now, as a beginner, or a lot of beginners think that the bigger the sensor, the more megapixels, the better the image quality. But no, that's not true. Because my Sony a7S III, for example, is a full frame camera, so big sensor, but it only has 12 megapixels. And this Canon M50 here is a small sensor camera, but it has 22 megapixels. So, you see, a bigger sensor doesn't necessarily mean more megapixels. And more megapixels also doesn't mean better image quality, because the image quality of my Sony a7S III is better than that of the Canon M50, which has more megapixels. But why do they always say then that a bigger sensor will give you better image quality? Well, it's true that bigger sensors usually give you better image quality especially in low lights at high ISO values. It will also give you a better dynamic range, more dynamic range, smoother tonal transitions. But that's not because the sensor has a lot of megapixels. It's mostly because of the size and the density of the pixels or the photoreceptors on the sensor. You know, if you put the same amount of photoreceptors on a small sensor and a big sensor, on the big sensor, you can make the photoreceptors bigger and more efficient. And that's what makes the difference. Now, that being said, it's not like small sensor cameras are bad, not at all, especially these days. Technology has advanced a lot compared to 10, 20 years ago. And a lot of small sensor cameras are really good in low light too. It all depends on what you're going to do with your images, because a big sensor might give you 5 or 10% increase in image quality, but do you really need it? That's the question, because you'll only really see the difference if you start shooting a lot in low light and at high ISO values, and then maybe you print those images. That's when you'll really see the difference. But for online content or photos of your travels that you only watch on a computer screen, I mean, of course you can buy a big sensor camera, but... <sighs> So that's why for a beginner, a small sensor will do just fine. Don't waste your money yet if you don't even know if you're gonna keep it up, your photography, you know? And the thing is, in the beginning, you won't be able to get the most out of that big sensor anyway. A big sensor in the hands of a beginner, it doesn't mean anything. It's not better, it's just more expensive. Instead, focus on storytelling and composition, lighting. And I promise you that you'll beat all those guys with their big sensor cameras who think their photos look better because of that bigger sensor. 100% reality again. And by the way, another advantage of small sensor cameras is that they're smaller because you don't need all that space for a big sensor. The lenses are also smaller, so you get a smaller setup in general. And for a lot of people, that's also important. And what about the megapixels then? Well, like I said, a lot of megapixels doesn't mean better image quality per se. It just means bigger images with more detail. You know, my Sony a7S III is just 12 megapixels, but the image quality is 
is excellent, it's super high quality, it looks beautiful, but it doesn't have a lot of megapixels. And because of that, if I want to blow up my images to make a huge print, it will look pixelated. The image quality will go down. So that's when you need a lot of megapixels, you know, if you want to print your images like a meter wide. But for social media, for example, Instagram, whatever, you don't need a 50 megapixel camera, not at all. 12 megapixels, like my Sony a7S III, that's perfect, it really is. Now, I do agree that sometimes it's nice to have a bit more megapixels so that you can crop your image without losing too much image quality, but 50, that's overkill for most people. Well, I would say go for something around 22 and you're good to go. And you could even crop your images if you want to. Most people do not need 50 megapixels unless they're trying to compensate for something. You know, I see so many people with a 50 megapixel $8,000 setup and then all they do is post photos on Instagram. That's it. It's ridiculous. Okay, but that's gonna be it for today because I feel like I'm, like my ranting is like, it's leveling up and okay. Look, I hope it helps. I also hope I, I, I've explained everything properly. I don't know, I'm not an engineer. I'm just a photographer and a videographer. So maybe I, I made some mistakes, but I will surely read about it in the comments. If you have questions, also drop them in the comments and thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Am I sweating? Aye.